Hi, welcome to the eCam channel. This is John. Today I'm going to introduce an electrochemical characterization technique named multiple step coronal amperometry, or MUSCA. It is a useful technique to study electrochemical kinetics and to couple with in situ experiments. We are going to explain its advantages, experimental setup, and the data processing. Cyclic photometry is a common analytical technique to characterize the electrochemical behavior of materials. Here is a typical potential profile that shows a complete cathodic and anodic cycle, and normalized cyclic voltammograms at various sweep rates for TS3C2 maxine in 3 molar sulfuric acid. The arrow here indicates the shift of anodic peak potentials at higher sweep rates due to kinetic limitations. In MUSCA, we apply a series of fewer but wider potential steps to cover the same potential window as cyclic voltammetry. Voltammograms of different sweep rates can be calculated from MUSCA data. Compared to the cyclic voltammograms, the MUSCA calculated voltammograms show reduced kinetic limitations. The difference comes from the induced current responses. Cyclic voltammetry leads to an increased current at higher sweep rates, which causes more kinetic limitations like ohmic polarization. On the other hand, the MUSCA technique minimizes ohmic contribution by moving to the next potential step after equilibrium is reached at minimal current. In addition to the minimized ohmic contribution, the benefits of MUSCA include more reliable kinetic studies like the K1-K2 analysis to distinguish the kinetic contributions from surface-limited or diffusion-limited currents. MUSCA is also compatible with many institute experiments as most physical characterization requires a certain data collection period. This data collection period can be matched with the holding time at each potential plateau. The physical connection for MUSCA is the same as those for cyclic voltammetry. You can have a 3 electrode setup with working, counter, and reference electrodes, or a 2 electrode setup by combining reference and counter electrodes. At the software interface, you can use either coronal amperometry or constant voltage techniques. For a specific potential step, you ask the potential step to hold a certain voltage for a certain period, time 1. We also need the potential step to record the current response every certain second T2. T1 determines the duration of each potential step, and T2 is the time resolution of our current responses. Because this is a multiple step technique, we need to set up the other steps. Different potential step manufacturers may have different setups, but please find a method that allows you to ramp from one potential step directly to the next without letting the potential drop to open circuit potential in between. Here I'm using the phrase sequence to indicate that the potential ramp should be a continuous process. In a new sequence, keep the time 1 and time 2 the same, change the voltage to the next value. Repeat the third step until all potential steps are set up. It may sound abstract, so here is an example. If we would like to perform MUSCA between 0 and negative 0.7 volts versus a reference electrode with 100 mV potential steps, we will set up 15 sequences with the following potential values at the steps. We can hold the potentials for 100 seconds to make sure the system reaches equilibrium and collect data every 0.02 seconds. If you wonder how the potential step selection affects the calculated voltammograms, please check out the paper by Shell and co-workers. We can obtain a current response with the MUSCA potential profile like the one here for titanium carbide maxine in 3 monosulfuric acid. Overall, the shape of the current looks similar to the ones obtained from cyclic voltammetry. From the current at the end of each potential step, we can tell minimum parasitic reactions like the hydrogen evolution reactions as the current decayed almost to zero at each step. Because voltammograms are constructed by current values, we need to calculate the current at each potential step using the equation here. It represents an average current calculated from the total charge measured over a timed interval on each potential step delta t. This delta t is calculated based on the sweep rates we would like to simulate as sweep rate is defined as the ratio of potential step to time. To continue the example of the last slide, here we calculate the current assuming a sweep rate of 100 mV per second. Because we have a potential step of 100 mV, 100 mV per second will result in a delta t of 1 second. Then at each potential step, we calculate a current value by first integrating the current over 1 second, showing the yellow area here, and then divide the value by 1 second. The resulted current compared to the original current response is shown on the right. It can be labor-intensive to go through all the potential steps and for all the sweep rates. So here is an example MATLAB code to automate this process accessible via my GitHub. 
It was made for MUSCA data collected from biologic potential stats, so you will want to amend it before applying it to your own data. I hope these explanations help you learn this relatively new electrochemical characterization technique called MUSCA. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. The videos in our eCAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.